When you think about Bill Gates, you probably think of him as a businessman, but there's a very good chance that you might first and foremost think of him as a philanthropist, especially over the past decade or so, thanks to uh, the very well-publicized efforts of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. But is their charity everything that it's been described as? Are there concerns lurking behind the surface? Well, we are lucky enough to be joined on the program today by freelance journalist uh, Jim Schwab, who had an awesome in-depth analysis of the philanthropic efforts of Bill Gates over at The Nation. Tim, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me, John. Uh, thank you for, for coming here. Um, we're going to have a link in the description to the full article, and people should definitely go take a look for a ton of supplementary information. Um, but before we launch into some of the specifics, I am curious, what led to uh, this report being put together? Um, I mean, I think like a lot of us, I've read the headlines over the decade, the favorable headlines about the Gates Foundation, uh, which is so headline ready. Every time they give away a million or 10 million or 100 million dollars, we read the headline about all the good that they're doing, but no journalists really take a step back and look backwards at what they've actually done. So at this point, the Gates Foundation has been around for two decades. Uh, they've given away something like $60 billion, more than $60 billion, 20,000 charitable grants. So you know, no journalist has really done a systematic analysis of, of all the work that they've kind of done or try to draw a circle around that work. Um, so I felt like it was uh, long overdue and it's something that I could do. I got a fellowship to do it from the Alicia Patterson Foundation, which was lucky. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you mentioned that this sort of work hasn't been done before. And it's not to say that it could not have been done before. In the article, you talk about uh, a documentary that was done about him, sort of sketching out who he really is. But while some stuff is revealed in the documentary, a lot, including the financial backing of, you know, the organization that helped to put together the documentary, the links that they have with Bill Gates are not explored. And and lots of, like, people are being used, and it, there's no mention of the fact that they themselves have received grants um, from Bill Gates. Do you think that, I mean, this seems like a pretty clear uh, sort of conflict of interest, but it's one of only many that you document there. Is that one of the reasons that we haven't seen more critical uh, analysis of uh, these charitable uh, d donations? Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's hard to really um, overestimate these kind of financial conflicts of interest. Um, so in my report in The Nation, I sort of mentioned just in passing the quarter billion dollars that the Gates Foundation has put into news and journalism. So that includes organizations like Participant Media, which produced this documentary we're talking about on Netflix. This is, um, you know, a three-part documentary. There was plenty of time to raise critical questions. Um, whether it really is a documentary or independent investigation, I think, is debatable. Uh, it reads more like a hagiography to me. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty uncritical. And as you note, they interview a lot of people within Gates' sphere of influence to try and understand Bill Gates. Um, but certainly to some extent, um, that is part of the reason why you don't have more critical reporting on Gates is because Gates is putting money into so many um, influential media outlets. Yeah, and uh, you, you mentioned some of the other conflicts of interest in, in this article. So I want to give people uh, a few numbers from it. Um, uh, gave away close to $2 billion in tax-deductible charitable donations to private companies, close to $250 million of which went to companies that the foundation itself has a vested interest, a financial vested interest in. Um, I, I'm assuming that that is legal, but it certainly seems unethical in some sense. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about that, about giving charitable donations to corporations that you will benefit from the continued financial success of? Yeah, so, I mean, there are rules. Congress and the IRS does have rules about this, but it's mainly about, you know, if you and I own a company and we run a foundation that's giving charitable grants to that company, like a really egregious example. Um, but if, it's, if you're a, a minority shareholder in a company, like Bill Gates has a few million dollars invested in these companies, to which he's giving charitable grants, those rules simply don't apply. Um, so I think that there's plenty of room um, to expand um, oversight over, over this idea of self-dealing. Um, you know, whether there's uh, the political will to do so is a different question. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, look, I, I mean, no one is going to 
ignore that, of course, some good obviously comes of all giving all this money. But it is clear that he he and his wife, that the organization, they're getting something for their money. Um, you know, we can we can speculate about potential financial returns from that. But also, he's gaining a great deal of influence in a number of different areas, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's the, that's the bigger picture of this. It's not... You know, the argument I make in the piece is not that the Gates Foundation is using charity to enrich themselves or their foundation, although you could argue that is happening. The real issue at hand is the political influence that they're gaining over public policy through their charity. Uh, I mean, your listeners are a smart bunch and they're probably not naive about this, but I do think that some people have this idea that Bill Gates is indiscriminately giving money to save the children and the Boys and Girls Club to help the world. And that's true. You know, he is doing that, but he's also giving money to the largest multinational companies in the world, um, empowering them um, to enter into new markets uh, where they can sell their products, um, not for a charitable purpose, mm -hmm. but, you know, to make money. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.